the team leader for Team Duke. I'm here with Marie. And same thing, we're going to go over our structural framing foundation system uh, based on a 200 mile per hour wind speed. Uh, so, first, we just looked into different variations of foundations. And we looked into real concrete piers as our first option. Um, we consider them because they're very uh, versatile. There's a lot you can do to work with the soil you're given or maybe some unforeseen circumstances. Uh, we're also able to see that based on uh, the diameter size, if you make it bigger, you can penetrate certain type of soils at the end of these to do that. Um, we also looked into the length of the piers um, as opposed to like maybe a steel steel driven pile, um, you can change the length if you come onto uh, the type of soil that maybe we were not expecting going deep enough. Uh, without any calculations, we just assumed maybe about 20 foot was our depth. Um, and another reason we considered this option was because considering other foundations, the steep foundations can will, will generate less noise and vibration opposed to some of these others. And we're considering being in a pretty public area as far as being on campus. And our mobilization costs tend to be a little cheaper than some uh, pile driving options just because the, the drill options are much cheaper. Uh, our next option we did look into though was uh, driven steel piling. Um, the, we looked into this because for the same reasons they can be driven through fairly well, and we don't really see why they can't be driven through these soils in particular, um, up to a depth. Um, they also can support large lateral loads in very hostile environments from just some research we looked into in the foundation, uh, just including you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. Uh, they tend to do really, really well if you pick the right steel member if you put a pile. They have a high strength and ductility, and um, they also have great tensile strength. Also, when considering this, we thought steel, more specifically as far as piling, would be a good option because the area, specifically here in Arkansas or central Arkansas, seems like we can probably get uh, some very good steel piling at a reasonable price. Uh, another option we looked into was a rent aggregate pier, which uh, we didn't know too much of, but we had seen that it's kind of commonly it's starting to be used a little more often, especially kind of in this area. And the way that works is just compacted lists of different aggregate. Uh, a lot of good examples I had seen were like SB2. That just uh, compacted in lists as they push down. Um, all this ramming will increase the lateral stress of, for this foundation. And it'll also help improve the soils, which will definitely help us. Um, it'll, it'll provide some great settlement control and it will increase the bear, uh, bearing pressure as far as considering the rest of our design and the foundation. So ultimately we came up with some relative costs and times. It's all very relative, so we use our means here as well. Um, but like I said, based off of like a 20 foot depth, we came up for drill concrete pierce to be about 102,000 in about 10 days. Uh, the driven steel piling came out to be 119,000 in eight days, and a ram aggregate came out to be 112,000 dollars in about six days. And on top of all of these deep foundations, we would need either a grade beam or a strip footing, which I included just about an average price within the, the bigger numbers for the deep foundations. I just listed on the bottom for reference, um, and that would be the cost for the project, just in a relative. So next we looked up into some framing systems for the walls. Um, we considered tilt-up concrete, and that was just more ease of, of work. It's, it's a, has probably the best constructability, uh, I guess, reason we can use uh, because of the in-place material form work that we can do and then just tilt it up when it's ready. It has very low operating costs, and we found that it's uh, very durable, so it's no maintenance after. Um, it also allows us to do different architectural aesthetics so we can match some of that like brick design that was on some of the plans that we could get by 
to the form work or a brick in the air, whatever it might be. So that tilts up concrete. We also looked into cast in place concrete walls, which is uh, just more general. It's uh, also great constructability. And depending on how it is uh, placed here, considering the other buildings, this might work better considering that we're a little tighter and we won't have to, we may not have room for tilt up walls. Um, we'll just have the forms going straight up and pour that in. And these forms can be reused throughout the project, whether we end up needing, needing to do uh, interior concrete walls or what, you know, the next part of that whole building. And we also looked into precast concrete walls. And uh, with good time preparation, we thought that. These can be just ready at a moment's notice. You just have to uh, have that good preparation and when you're ready, uh, we can get this set up and put up quickly. Like as I said here, it also has a quick reaction time with a very limited crew as well. Um, and also since it's gonna be manufactured outside of the area, the manufacturer will be able to have a greater control of it, uh, which will allow us to maybe save money as far as so we don't over design. And again, it came up with some relative costs right here. Uh, my tilt-up concrete came up to be about 105000 in uh, three days. And none of this includes like two minute times of all of this. I'm sure it's uh, Cast in place, concrete came out to be about 204000 The big difference there was more of the form work uh, in about nine days. And the precast concrete was about 155000 days, or $155,000 in seven days. And uh, I overestimated somewhat on the days, but I just kind of accounted for um, times that maybe might be lost in transportation errors or error of manufacture. But I thought that might be fairly reasonable. And we looked into our roofing systems. Uh, first option we considered was our hollow core precast concrete planks that we could use. And we considered this just because they come in a lot of variation of spans, widths, and depths that we, can, we thought we can easily use to accommodate this building. And without getting into deep design, you know, we weren't sure what we could have done. Um, we also found that it can be supported by all different kinds of structural systems. So based off all the walls we picked, this should be able to be supported without having any interior columns on the walls or a column with three inch across. And they also tend to resist large lateral loads and it's a very good fire system. Another option we considered was precast double teeth. Uh, same reason for here because they do come in various width bands and lengths. And they do easily come in one so that we don't need any interior columns as well. Um, due to the flange and web on these though, as opposed to the, the planks, has a great control or some higher loads. Uh, more because it's heavier too. And it also has a very low cost with also very little maintenance. And our last option we considered was a little more in depth. We probably don't know too much about this without any more in, in design, but we did some insulated reinforced concrete. Just use slabs with insulation and then another slab with less concrete. Um, it has very good durability and FEMA recommended it um, as well, but there's a lot of more specific calculations that we would need to do in order to get further on that as far as comparison purposes for what we have. Um, but another good reason, it has lightweight forms and they're a little bit able to use to save money on. And the insulation and sound proofing are also great. Um, I didn't include that last one in my estimate just because, like I said, it, was, it kind of varies pretty widely if we don't design it correctly. Um, so I just calculated the holocore precast and the LTs, and the holocore precast came out to be about 154000 in about four days' time and $121,000 for the precast double teeth in two days. And finally we looked into our wind load and we went and got our velocity pressure at a mean height of 24 feet. <coughs> Using all these factors right here, we used our directionality factor um, for the building at 0.85. We used our topographic factor at one based off of uh, counting for all the hills and ridges that, that's what that would count for. And our terrain factor here 
will we use the category C in this instance, uh, 0.937. This, we use category C to count for open terrain. Just the scattered obstructions, just to consider what you all had mentioned in the last meeting, not to really account for the other buildings. And we ultimately came out with our velocity pressure equal uh, 81.56 pounds per square foot. And with that, we would get calculated our uh, design and pressure for our wind load based off of this calculation here with our gust factor and our external and internal pressure coefficients. And our internal pressure coefficient we use 0.18. <coughs> Uh, we'll have to do a plus or minus for that with our gust factor 0.5. And we also came up with our windward and leeward, again based off the same information of 0.8 and negative uh, 0.03. Ultimately, following the equation and all the terms that we picked uh, from AC 710, we came up with our windward pressure of uh, 70.14 pounds per square foot and the leeward pressure of negative 35.48 pounds per square foot. And this pressure will be determined based off of where a tornado will actually strike at 200 miles per hour um, for this, for you to be able to actually visualize the windward leeward pressure. Um, but ultimately, we, through all the foundation and wall system and roofing system, as a group, we decided that um, we would suggest to you guys that we would like to go move forward with driven concrete piers with a strip footing connecting that with tilt up walls and precast double T's as our roof. Um, with all of these systems though that we presented, we think you know a strong community shelter can easily be built through the roof. And if you choose the systems we suggested, we base it off economic and strength reasons that we think this might work best, particularly with those 200 miles per hour. Did you talk about driven concrete? Oh, so oh my I'm first sorry. question. That's supposed to be drill concrete. Drill? Okay, yeah. drill concrete. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because, right. okay. I mean, you can make concrete piles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we had okay. discussed that, but we didn't. Yeah, which that. nobody mentioned. I would have thought someone would have had concrete piles, but nobody mentioned that one. Okay. Did Rand Agger get peers? Mm -hmm. How did you price that? I'm just curious.